Hey, this is René, and one more time we will have a look at this uh, super trend system and we will add a trailing stop. Right now the program only places a uh, first stop if a position is opened at the super trend level. But if the super trend moves upwards or downwards, the SL is not changed. So we will take care of, um, take care of this. So how can we implement a trailing stop? Uh, this is pretty easy in this case because we already know the ticket of a open position and we already have a block where we select this position so what we can do is we can simply copy this block here which we use to close a position if there's a counter signal and we can paste it up here this block of course cannot be inside of this if statements body because we Oh, yeah, I mean, I'm talking uh, stupid things right now. This can be, of course, inside of the body because we have to modify this only once if there is a new bar. So what we do here is we, we check whenever there's a new bar, we check if we have a open position and if we are able to select this position. Then we, we check if this is a buy position or a sell position. So I usually check the buy position first. And then we check if it is not a buy position. Then we check if position get integer, position type is a sell position. Position type sell like this. And make sure to always like structure your code. You can see here I have this if statement here. And this is the opening bracket. And this is the closing bracket. So the closing bracket is <coughs> aligned with the... Um, start of this if statement. So you can see that the body starts here and ends here. And it is easy, you can see it with one glance at this code, because it is structured. And inside of this body here, where we check if we have a buy position, we then want to check if, um, or we want to calculate um, the new SL, which is again the super trend um, at position one and we want to round this of course so we say normalize double uh, sl and digits and we want to check if this sl is greater than position um, get double position sl shin sl like this if this is true we want to modify this trade but First of all, let us do some adjustments here because we can move this up here because we need it for the buy and for the sell positions. So we calculate the new SL and what we also need is the position SL. So position um, get double position SL is the modifier, uh, identifier for this, and we also need the position TP, position get double, position shin TP. You will see in a second why we need the take profit. So we check if the new SL, so if the, uh, if the, if the super trend is above the current position SL, and in this case, we want to use the trade object and use the position modify function of this object. This um, position modify function has three parameters, which is a SL, and then we choose the new SL and a TP, and then we choose the old TP because we do not want to adjust the TP. And then we can say the position was modified like this. So this is um, a little bit fast, I think, but I will... Um, talk you through this code later on. We, uh, for the sales side, we check if the SL is below the position SL or if the position SL is zero, which means that there is no position SL. In this case, we want to modify the position. So let us look at this again. So whenever there's a new bar, we calculate the super trend values here. Then we check if we have an open position. Uh, or if position ticket is greater than zero. In this case, we try to select a position. And if we're able to select a position, we then calculate the SL, which is simply the super trend value at the last bar. 
And we then round this value so there are no unexpected um, numbers, for example, at the fifth or eighth uh, precision. Then we can calculate or oh, we receive the position SL and position TP using the position get double function. And we can use the position get double function because we previously selected a position using the pos position select by ticket function here. We then check if the currently open position is a position type by position or a position type sell position. If it is a by position, we check if the new SL, so if the super trend at the last bar is above the current position SL. And in this case, we simply modify the position. For the sell side, we do the exact opposite pretty much. We check if the new SL is below the old position or current position SL. In this case, we modify the position. To modify a position, you can use the position modify function, which is part of the Ctrade class, and you can um, yeah, use it by uh, using the trade object variable here, which we declared up here. And the position modify function is pretty easy. You just provide a position ticket and a SL and a TP. If you want to change these values, you have to provide new values. If you want to keep the current SL or take profit, like we do here for the take profit, you just provide the old or current TP value. So if we compile this and if we restart, uh, restart the program, you should see that everything yeah, works fine and we now see modification of positions. Um, if the market uh, rises um, or uh, yeah, if it, if it goes up or down, um, then you can see the TP is, is modified. Yeah, this is, this is working really good, I think. So we now have a trailing stop. And yeah, just check if this trailing stop makes sense for you. So I, um, I, I will not make testing, but what I will uh, or always recommend is um, you can say, for example, it is a, it is a cool way to say, for example, um, you want to have a Boolean input is TSL or um, TSL active or whatever you want to call it. And you can say only if this variable is true, then you want to check um, this uh, piece of code. So you can do it like this. You can wrap all this in the body of this if statement. Make sure that you have your brackets correct. And if we compile this, you can see now we have an input. And we can say TSL is active or is not active. You can, of course, do the same for the TP factor. You can, for example, say TP factor um, 0 to, to turn it off. And then you have to check um, here, where we calculate the TP, you have to say, for example, TP is zero, and if TP factor is greater than zero, then you want to calculate a new TP. But if it is not greater than zero, then you only want to have zero as a TP, which means that there will be no TP placed. We can do the same, of course, for cell. We can check if TP factor is greater than zero. In this case, we want to calculate the TP, otherwise it will stay zero. So if we have these changes, so no uh, trading stop, no TP, it will look a little bit different. I can demonstrate it real quick. So have a look here. You can see there is no TP, there is no trading stop, everything is a little bit different and the position will be closed once there is a counter signal. So you can see once we have the basis for your program, it is really easy to make adjustments like we just did. And yeah, this is really cool. So play around with this code, play around with the tester, test different input settings here and try to figure out what fits for your personal trading style or for, um, yeah, for your market time frame combination. I, I hope you learned something and that you have some, um, some, some new, um, um, uh, some new uh, ways here to test the super trend indicator. Um, yeah, leave me a comment um, if you um, want to share some, some of your thoughts and also make sure to hit the like button on this video so everyone will see this video and everyone is able to learn about automated trading. Um, yeah, and otherwise, I will see you next time. Until then, have a good time. Bye-bye.